So Chip, you've done a great job of using Maslow in your own company to build a culture that works and in fact is a high performing company. Are there examples of other companies who have successfully used this concept? Yeah, you know, when we had gotten through most of the downturn, um, I started writing down a bunch of my notes about what we had learned. Um, I think that's one of the greatest things a, a leader can do is to say, you know, frankly, in the worst times, you learn more. Mm -hmm. And how do you actually write down, like, what did you learn? And how then are you teaching that? And in, in a leader's legacy kind of way, helping others in your organization to understand it. Well, as I started to actually look at Maslow and how it could be applied to other companies, I started looking at other companies that I thought sort of seemed very Maslowian. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and lo and behold, I found out that Apple and Harley-Davidson and Southwest Airlines and Continental Airlines and um, a bunch of other organizations had used Maslow in how they had actually created their business uh, model or their business strategy. That was really encouraging. And then what I've found more recently after writing the book and, and having people read it is that there's a bunch of other people out there, <clears throat> everybody from Tony Shea, who's the CEO of Zappos, a very successful online retailer, to George Zimmer from Men's Warehouse, um, who actually really believe in the principles behind, behind Peak. And so there's a bit of a movement of people and leaders who are saying, how can we focus on the higher needs of, of, our, of our people? Not just our employees, but the higher needs of our customers and maybe even the higher needs of our investors. If I have one enduring uh, piece of wisdom I've learned from studying Maslow, te you know, writing Peak, teaching classes on Peak, it's this, it's that the most companies are survival companies. They're sort of built on, we're focusing on the bottom of the pyramid because it's the easiest thing to measure and it's sort of how we benchmark ourselves versus other companies. Those companies that actually transcend the bottom of the pyramid are differentiating themselves. And the ultimate differentiator in any business is how do you create a differentiated loyalty? How do you create deeper loyalty with your key constituencies or stakeholders? This model is based upon that. And the ideal time, frankly, to put this model in place is during a recession or during a downturn, partly because it's the time where everyone's commoditizing themselves. Everyone's getting down to that survival place. And when you, st when you go up to that success level or even to that transformation level, you stand out even more. So um, again, I learned it during the last downturn. We're trying to apply it during this downturn. And what's very encouraging for me to see today is that there's a bunch of other companies out there that are also doing the same thing of seeking the peak.